today we're going to look at heating and cooling curve graphs. These heating and cooling curve graphs basically show us what happens with temperature over time. As we go through and look at these different uh, heating and cooling curves, we're going to see how as the temperature changes over time, whether our substance is going to be in a solid, liquid, or gas form, and also whether it is going to be melting, freezing, condensing, or vaporizing. And so as we go through this, we're going to label the key parts that you need to understand to be able to interpret this graph. So make sure you're following along. Uh, first thing that we have here is you're going to notice that we have these slanted lines on our chart. So I'm going to highlight these um, with the highlighter. You can also if you would like. All right. So basically what these slanted lines represent are phases. Uh, so remember, we've got three different phases. We have solid, liquid, and gas. If you look at this first slanted line right here, we have to determine whether this is a solid, liquid, or gas. You're starting off at a very high temperature, and you'll notice that as time progresses, the temperature begins to drop. You have to remember that temperature is a measure of kinetic energy. So basically, if this is a high temperature, you should know that whatever state of matter this is has to be the state of matter that has the highest kinetic energy, and that is your gases. So go ahead and write gas right there. So if this is gas, as our temperature begins to decrease, all right, um, what would be the next logical um, state of matter for this line? It would be liquid. All right, because we know as a gas cools down, it will eventually begin to shift into a liquid. And as a liquid further cools down, all right, so in this case, this is a cooling curve, like I forgot to mention. Um, so as our gas cools down, our liquid cools down, basically you should end up with a solid. Okay, and just as a reminder, what I like to do is I like to draw some boxes right here. It'll show us basically um, what our uh, solid liquid and gas look like as a particle form. So we have to remember gases are pretty far apart and they kind of just move around wherever. Whereas liquids are a little bit closer together, but they're still pretty spread out. And then your solids are pretty uh, tightly packed, all right? And they've got a pretty firm structure. Um, so of these three, you have to understand that whichever one has the highest temperature is the one with the most kinetic energy. And so if we look at our gases, our gases would be the ones with the highest kinetic energy. So I'm going to put an up arrow and a Ke for high kinetic energy. Over here in our liquids, uh, the kinetic energy is going to be dependent on whether or not we are uh, having a heating curve or a cooling curve. And so in this case, I'm going to put a triangle or delta to show us that we have a change in kinetic energy here at this point. Okay, so you can see that when we go from C to D or even from D to C, that your kinetic energy or your temperature is moving up or down. So there is some change in kinetic energy. When we go to our solids, um, you do have a change in kinetic energy also. But at this point in uh, the different phases, this will have the least amount of kinetic energy. I'm going to put a down arrow and a Ke to signify that this has the least amount of kinetic energy in comparison to these two. The other thing you want to keep in mind um, with this cooling curve graph is what these flat lines represent. So I'm going to use a different color to symbolize these flat lines. Hopefully you can see it. All right, so I'm going to take a moment to color that in real quick. All right. So uh, these flat lines represent your um, phase changes, okay? So things like melting, freezing, vaporization, condensation. Uh, what the heating cooling curve does not show you is sublimation and deposition. Um, so in my opinion, because they don't show you those things, this makes it an easier graph to interpret. So if we look at the first section, BC, all right? Uh, if we go from gas to liquid, so B to C, what kind of phase change is this? This is called condensation. Now, if we go the opposite direction, so liquid to gas, what is that phase change called? That is called vaporization. And so on these flat lines, like I said, we have to understand that these flat lines symbolize phase changes, not phases. Uh, the other thing you'll need to know about these flat lines, and I'm going to draw it right here, if I can squeeze it in, uh, is there's a special name for this section. 
um, that we'll go into more detail in the next unit, but I'm just going to introduce it to you now. This is also known as the heat of vaporization. All right, and so in the next unit, we'll start doing math with this. But for now, all you need to know is this vocabulary term, which means uh, anytime we are talking about condensation or vaporization, we can call this section the heat of vaporization. The other thing I'd like you to add to your chart is when we think of condensation, so going from gas to liquid, here we go from high energy to lower energy. We have to figure out, is this endothermic or exothermic? Because you are going from high kinetic to lower kinetic energy, you are losing uh, energy. And so we would call this an exothermic phase change, all right? Because we are allowing energy to exit as we transition from gas to liquid. So if this one's exothermic, vaporization has to be what? It has to be endothermic, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and write endo next to vaporization. So as we continue with this graph, uh, if we go now from liquid to solid, what do we call that? That is called freezing. And now if we go the opposite direction, so solid to liquid, that is called what? That is called melting. All right. And so of those two, we also need to be able to identify whether they are exothermic or endothermic. And so here, when we go from liquid to solid, again, we go from this amount of kinetic energy to a lesser amount of kinetic energy. So to go from high to low, you must be losing energy. And so that makes freezing an exothermic process. So that would leave us with melting as an endothermic process, where it has to gain energy as a solid to move up into the liquid. This section, so this red section, also has a um, special name that you need to know. Uh, this section is called the heat of fusion. All right, so hopefully you can see that there, heat of fusion. And so again, we won't really go into more detail except that you need to know that this section can either be considered freezing, melting, or heat of fusion, which is another vocab uh, term to keep in mind. And finally, the last thing you need to know about this curve is that whenever we look at the slanted lines, okay, again, this, these are just your phases, so solid, liquid, or gas. Uh, at these slanted lines, the only thing that's changing is kinetic energy. So you've got kinetic energy here, kinetic energy here, kinetic energy here. Um, so, but if we look at our flat lines, we notice that the flat lines does not, the flat lines do not change in temperature. And so that means kinetic energy isn't changing. But what's the opposite of kinetic energy? It's potential energy. So at these flat lines, what you're gonna see is a change, and I'm gonna write it down right here. Uh, remember the triangle delta represents change. This represents the change in potential energy. So at these flat lines, I'm gonna squeeze this one in right here, you're gonna see a change in potential energy. So how it works is you have a gas, the gas is in this specific um, graph, excuse me, in this specific graph, you're gonna notice that we're gonna start off with a gas at a very high temperature. And we're gonna notice the kinetic energy or the temperature is going to drop as time, uh, time continues. Once it hits uh, the condensation point, what'll happen is kinetic energy stops changing potential energy. Okay, so it's condensating. And now it's going to turn to a liquid at point C. And at point C, the liquid's going to continue to cool down. So as we progress, it's going to keep going down, down, down. So kinetic energy is dropping. As we hit point B and hit freezing, what will happen is now your kinetic energy stays constant and your potential energy will change. As your potential energy changes, when you hit point E, it's now a solid. And as it continues to cool, uh, the kinetic energy of your solid will decrease. All right, so this is an example of a cooling curve graph. You have to be able to interpret both a cooling curve and a heating curve graph. So what you should do right now is you should do some of these questions below.